Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel in today's video where we are going to take a look at one of the most interesting solar companies out there at the moment. We are talking about Jinko Solar. It was part of our top 10 growth solar company videos that we launched the other day and we thought okay now it's a good time to take a deeper look into Jinko Solar. So the company was founded in 2006 and it's one of the world's largest manufacturers of solar panels. It's a Chinese company that has operations in more than 80 different countries so it has a global reach. It employs more than 15,000 people. It has nine production facilities in three different countries. It has 21 overseas subsidiaries and it's basically built as a vertically integrated solar product value chain which means that they both sell solar modules but they also sell individual solar cells and mono wafers. Again a really interesting company that we are going to take a look at today. If we take a look at the share price, what we can see is that since the bottom of the corona situation, the stock price was around 13.92 USD. It then skyrocketed up and around end of October, it was around 90.20 USD dollar a share. Around one month after it had fallen down to around 65 USD and that was where we covered it in our first uh, top 5 solar video where we said hello this is a good company it has some good numbers but it looks a little bit expensive to us. It as you can see then subsequently it has been trading a bit sideways across until around a few weeks ago where it was around 62 US dollars a share and now it has tumbled down with around 35% to 40.85 US dollars a share. We are in this video going to take a deeper look at the stock and we're going to give our recommendations as to whether this should be an interesting pick for you guys moving forward. So as we mentioned just before, they have nine manufacturing locations. Seven of them are located in China. They have one in Malaysia and then they have one in the US. And those are primarily focusing on manufacturing the four different panel types. The first have the Eagle series, which was the first one to be released in 2013. And it is considered the most affordable panel in the solar panel range. And it's potentially to be phased out going forward because it has been replaced by some of the newer series. One of them is the cheetah that came in 2018 it is the most popular one that they have as of today the output from these panels are 325 watt to 340 watt in both the standard 60 or 120 half cut cell residential size and it's slightly larger for the commercial sites where it's 420 watt again we are by no means a technical expert so this is more resume of the technical specifications of the panels in 2020 based on new technology, they can now have a slightly larger 66 cell or 132 half cut panel, which basically just means that they increase the efficiency and has a greater output that is now ranging from 360 watts to 380 watts. So again, an improvement of the panel's performance overall the output. And basically they believe that this new industry standard will possibly replace the more traditional 60 cell that has been the dominant one back in the days. Then they have the Swan series that was announced in 2019. What is different about that is that it's transparent double-sided backboard components. It's very similar to the Cheetah in terms of quality and performance. Cheetah is slightly better in terms of efficiency. However, the benefit of the Swan series is that it's much more lightweight, so it's better for smaller and weaker roofs, and it's easier to install, which obviously means that the installation cost of those are being brought down as well. Finally, we have the newest and most interesting series that they have launched is the Tiger series, which is again similar to the Cheetahs as part of their Big Cat series. And what is really interesting about this one is that the sizes, first of all, initially was from 360 watt to a huge 470 watt output. It's quite significant for solar panels and it features some of the latest innovations within the panel technologies. So one of them is the Tillin Ribbon technology, which was the one we just mentioned before on the Cheetah series. It's basically a manufacturing technique where the cells are slightly overlapped, which eliminates the gap between the cells and it increases the overall cell coverage, which in turn increases the efficiency. And obviously what this means is just higher performance, reduced cost, improved reliability, and of course, in general, increased efficiency. They have two types of, of, of the panels within the Tiger series. They have the mid-level panels, which is designed on a conventional P 
B-type silicon based, and then they have introduced the high-end N-type tiger panels that are built on what they call high purity N-type silicon base, which achieves up to 20.9 efficiency in the new 78 cell format based on the Tillin Ripon technology. And during the Q3 of 2020, they launched what they call the Tiger Pro series, and that is a 610 watt version of the current Tiger Pro panel, which makes it more, one of the most powerful panels on the market. And basically, this is currently designed for large utility scale solar farms, and it's not yet available for residential stuff. But what is interesting about this is that it's also backed by a 15 or 25 year product warranty and an extended 30 year performance warranty. Jingo Solar in the past only issued around 10 years uh, warranties on the products, which was on the lower side in the market, and now they have actually notched that up. So what it basically means is that they previously were a bit more known to, to make reliable but relatively uh, affordable and relatively good value solar panels, but they were not making the best in the market. But what Jinko Solar is doing at the moment with these new um, technology and solar panels is that they're going into the more uh, upscale part of the solar panel market. And that's also why they're able to uh, basically expand obviously the product offerings, but also providing better product warranties on their products. So just to show the overall benefits that the Tiger Pro N-Type series is bringing to the market, Jingo Solar has a benchmark with some of the more standard monoperc type of panels, large cell monoperc panels, the standard Tiger ones. And obviously what we can see here is that the efficiency is brought up to 22.30% in terms of efficiency conversion. In terms of power output, they're now going for 610, so extensively upgrading the, the, the power output. And then also the cost of electricity is also being significantly reduced with this improvement in the power output. So again, bringing a better product to the market at lower cost obviously should be a benefit versus some of their competitors. Because what we understand is that when a customer needs to take a decision on which solar panel it should select, it is based on the four following factors. One of them is the efficiency of the solar panels, it's the performance of the solar panels, it's the warranty that the company gives to the customers, and finally it's obviously also the price of the solar panels. And as we mentioned just before, Jingo Solar was known to be a good entry-level cost-effective panels, but now they are taking it a step further with the Tiger Pro series. As far as we can understand when reading some of the analysis and the company on the solar panels specifically, is that the Tiger series is maybe one of the best solar panels in the world right now. It's new, it's effective, and it's cheap, and it easily is one of the best on the market right now. And what really makes it interesting is that it can perform similar to some of the top brand panels like SunPower and LG, but it only costs half as much. And at the same time, as we mentioned just before, it gives similar warranties as well in terms of product warranty. So again, the price, quality, efficiency and performance of Jingo Solar panels is what makes them one of the best solar panel manufacturers in the world. And what we think is quite interesting with them is that they have different ranges of solar panels now, so their customer base should be expanding. And on top of that, by improving the solar panels, it means that they're not standing still in terms of research and development, something we will also illustrate later in the video. And again, the new technology that they're bringing to the table can separate them from some of the customers and potentially bring them a competitive advantage. So again, considering all these things, it is an indication that Jingo Solar may be one of the most interesting solar manufacturer, uh, panel manufacturers in the world, and it may be in the years to come. On top of this, as far as we understand, they are also getting a lot of records and awards on a yearly basis. They, they have 12 different world records as far as we know. And again, this is not just some bullshit random 
uh, awards it's some of the famous solar industry awards so again keep that in mind that's something that we really find exciting about the company is the whole panel uh, technology that they have and also the variety that they have so they can position themselves to different types of customers depending on what suits the customer. So if we take a look at the Q3 2020 highlights, it's important to stress that Jingo Solar is announcing Q4 uh, results just in a few days and we are naturally going to follow up on that in a separate video. However, the quarterly shipments in the Q3 report were 5,117 megawatt, up 53.8% year over year. Total revenues were 1.3 billion, up 17.2 year over year, and gross profit was 220, up 8.2 year over year so this is growth which is obviously one of the most important things to look at with some of these companies which one is growing overall and Jingo Solar is definitely doing that and that's why it's a, an extremely interesting company the gross margin were only 17% compared with 17.9% in Q2 2020 and 185 in Q3 2019 so it was a little bit less good unfortunately However, the EBITDA was 144 million, up 36.8 year over year. Income from operations were up 27.9 year over year. Non-GAAP net income were up 6.7 year over year. So again, overall, really strong numbers that they have. They have a lot of cash and short-term uh, restricted cash on their balance sheet. So again, really good numbers. Their guidance for the Q4 report is shipments of 5.5 gigawatt to 6 gigawatt. So again, an increase obviously, revenue of 1.3 billion to 1.43 billion and gross margins between 13 to 15%. So a slight reduction there, but definitely in terms of revenue and also shipments that they're selling to customers, it's going up and that's naturally a very important element for growth companies like this. If we take a short term look at some of the numbers that Jingo Solar has been reported in their quarterly report, what we can see is that the revenue and module shipments over the last approximately two years has gone up from Q1 2019 to Q3 2020, which is good increase of 20% and more than 50% on the module shipments. In terms of gross profit and gross margin over the period, it has also gone up, which is naturally good. However, if we compare with one year ago, both the gross profit and the gross margin has been uh, reduced. Similar, the operating profit and operating margin has gone up over time, but compare with one year ago, it has gone down from 8.5 to 6.2 and 89 million to 80 million, which is obviously not too good to see, but again, we think that there's good reasons for that. Finally, the non-GAAP net income and net margin, the net margin was reduced from 4% to 3.7% over year over year. However, there was an increase in the non-GAAP income from 42 million to 47 million. So again, a little bit mixed numbers across the board, but what is more important for us is to zoom a bit further out and take a look at the numbers from a bit longer time horizon. So here we have made our five-year detail financed. And what is very important to stress is that from 2020, we only have three quarters. So you need to keep in mind that there's missing a quarter when we're looking at these graphs. But what we can see is that from 2015 up to 2020, considering the 1.3 billion that we are expecting in revenue from them in Q4 at least, well, the revenue is in an uptrend year over year and that's obviously very important that they're increasing their revenue and when we come include the fact that they're now targeting other type of customers with the Tiger Pro series. Well, that is an indication of if the product is as good as they say and they can sell it for half of the cost, well, that should mean that the revenue will increase in the future. We can also take a look at the annual revenue year over year growth and what we can see over most of the recent quarters, it has actually been positive, which is obviously very important. And from the last quarter, it was 22%.
Then we take a look at the annual net income. And what we can see here is that that was very big in 2016. However, what is important to stress here is that that was due to a disposal of some of the assets they were selling off the downstream part of their solar business and that had a positive influence in 2016. So that's basically a one year time thing that is not going to be recurring in the future years. And that's why you need to reduce the amount in 2016 considerably to take this into account. So again, keep that in mind. And again, if we then take a look at around 2017, which seems to have been a relatively poor year from them, up until 2020 with the most recent quarter we should see an improved trend year over year over the last four year which is obviously very important as well finally we thought it would be interesting to take a look at the annual r d spending that they had and by no surprise from 2015 to 2018 it went up considerably this was here where they probably developed a lot on the on, on the swan and the cheetah series we can see that it has decreased in 2020 to 36 million dollars however keep in mind here again that we are missing a quarter so we should expect this number to in the range of the middle 40 40 million dollars approximately and again what we just want to stress here is that r d spending has been going up and appears to be relatively stable at least for now which means that again they're not laying on the low side they're not suddenly just cutting all the R&D spending after the launch of the, the the Tiger series they're continuing to investing in improving their business and that's obviously also something that we are very interested in seeing and again if they can get more revenue out of less R&D spending it's obviously even better so again i think when you look at the numbers for the last five years across the board it is looking quite solid for jingo solar and including again the the product uh, launch of the tiger pro series and the swan in 2019 they seem poised to be really standing strong in the solar panel market so again quite good numbers overall at least according to to our view if you look at these things and combine it with the market share what we can see here is that the market share of the top five module manufacturers continues to improve. So it went from 39 to 65 to 70%. So it seems like that there's being a consolidation within the module manufacturing of solar panels and the top five companies are taking a bigger slice of the cut. And when we then take a look at what JKS market share is of the overall market, we can see over the last year that they have gone from 11% to 15%. So this is a clear indication that they are launching perhaps more products which again uh, is 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 more feasible for certain types of customers that they couldn't get before it could also just be that they deliver so good products that the customers are simply selecting them over their competitors so again combining these two things with the global solar demand as is in 2020 and how it is expected to grow in 2021 and 2022 it means that JKS is expected to capture additional revenue and perhaps more market share. And all those things should obviously contribute to more positive numbers, which should have a positive influence on the share price. So again, looking at these numbers in terms of the market share that they are capturing and also that the market is growing well, it's always a good indicator for uh, strong, solid companies. As we mentioned, Earlier in the video, they're going to launch the Q4 report in a few days. And usually we don't really comment too much as to whether we expect them to beat the expectations or not in our video. But we actually have a quite good feeling with Jingo Solar. We think that it's realistic that the module shipments have gone up with the introduction of the new Tiger series. And also because the solar market had had strong momentum in the second half of 2020. The revenue, again, should also be able to follow whether they will meet the analyst expectation of 1.37 billion that is still to be seen. We think that it's being realistic. We don't think that there's a high likelihood that they're going to underperform, but obviously you never know. On the EPS part, the expectation is 0 0.85 US dollars a share. And what is really interesting is that the last two quarters was 1.2 on the EPS, and four quarters ago, the EPS was 1.4. So 
again, we think that there is a realistic chance that they're going to beat these numbers, but again, there's no guarantees. And finally, the gross margin, they have been quite conservative with 13 to 15%, and we also think that that is going to be beaten. So overall, again, we are not we don't know, obviously, if they're going to beat the, the expectations, but we think that there's a realistic chance of them, given what we have seen and analyzed so far on the company. So from a risk perspective, we thought it would be interesting to mention some of the things that they mention in their annual report. It's by no means a complete view of all the risks that they're listing, but these were the ones when browsing through. We thought, hey, they are the most interesting. But in general, most of them are really more uh, sector specific than uh, related to Jingo Solar only. They mentioned government subsidies and elimination of that. Obviously, that's always a risk, but that goes again for all other companies as well. They said that there could be oversupply of solar cells and modules in the solar industry, which may cause downward pressure on the pricing. Well, at the moment, it seems like demand is really strong. So again, not a huge concern for us as of today. Also, compared to uh, the products and the prices that Jingo Solar has, they mentioned that they're Chinese companies that is listed on the U.S. exchange. And we obviously know that there has been a war between China and, and, and U.S. for quite some time. We don't see that as a huge risk as of today. Volatility in the price of silicon raw materials, which is again very industry specific. We don't know a lot about the silicon raw material supply, so there could be bottlenecks there. We have seen that in some of the other related industries, which is the EVs, where there's a shortage of the chips. This could also be the case, which obviously would mean that cost of goods are going up. So that would be something that would have to be checked. But again, it's not something that would only be negative for Jingo Solar. It would be general for the general market and also their uh, competitors. And finally, they mention intense competition in solar power product markets fail to adapt to changing market conditions and to compete successfully with existing or new competitors, business prospects and results of operations would be materially adversely affected. Well, yes, but what we are seeing is that they're launching a lot of new products that is targeted in different sectors segments of the market and they seem to be doing it successfully in terms of quality and the price so we would not be too concerned about that. The last part, lack of sufficient patent protection in and outside of China may undermine our competitive position. And again, we haven't seen a huge lot of a huge uh, amount of stuff around their uh, IP and and how much they have protected this, but that is obviously something that we would be concerned about if they're not managing to to patent their technologies. Well, obviously if it can be replicated by the competitors that would reduce the competitive advantages so that we were a little bit concerned about seeing that but it may be that we're just reading into the words of some of the risks that they need to, to to mention however this is something that we obviously are very focused on when we're analyzing companies we want their ip rights to be in place so they cannot be easily replicated so just to wrap up, what are some of the pros that we are seeing with Jingo Solar? Well, overall, they have strong financial numbers with high growth in general. They have award-winning products. They produce now high-quality products for lower cost. Tiger Series, as we have mentioned several times in the video, they are in general focusing on developing new products. They have launched the Cheetah, the Swan, and the Tiger Series over the last few years, and we expect new type of solar panels to be added to the list going forward. They're actually pursuing overseas operations opportunities and they're also establishing more manufacturing capacity out of China which we also think it's good. The solar market is expected to grow significantly in the coming years and Jingo Solar is already now taking a bigger piece of the market and they're launching products that can target other parts of the market that perhaps haven't been available to them in the past. What are some of the cons? Well, wh what we understood was that they had some limited patent technology outside of China, which is obviously a bit of a concern to us. There's the US-China conflict, which is not a huge con, but we thought it would be important just to mention some. And there's obviously still intense competition from Sun Power, Canadian Solar, Fur Solar, etc. They're not the only player on the market. But despite all of that, we really like what we are seeing from Jingo Solar and we see a bright future in the solar industry also despite the heavy competition. With the recent drop in the share price, we believe that an entry point in Jingo Solar is starting to look attractive when you look at the PE and the PS ratio. And we th honestly think that this is a company that you should buy and hold long term, potentially forever. Uh, it, it, it's really encouraging the numbers that we are seeing, the whole market growth and uh, 
market share growth that Jingo Solar is having at the same time as launching of new products just screams a buy to us. So again, it's again one of these solar companies that we see as standing out compared to some of the others that we have analyzed. But please keep in mind that we are not professional financial advisors and we're only doing this for entertainment purpose. Really make sure you do your own due diligence before you take an active investment decision. This was all we had for today. We really hope you liked this video. Please subscribe for future content. Please give us a like. It really helps with the algorithm. And please provide a comment in the comment section. What do you think about Jingo Solar? Do you see a bright future for them? Do you think that there's something that we have missed? We always like your opinion. So please put a comment in the comment section. Besides that, there's not much more to say than stay safe, have a nice day. Hasta la vista, baby.